Hi everyone, my name is Adam Seeley. I'm an award-winning back pain specialist and osteopath, and today I'm going to be teaching you some of the best ways to develop your core strength. Now, a quick Google search will generate thousands of different workout routines and exercise suggestions, but this video will teach you how to develop your core strength in a manner that's safe, structured, and backed up by scientific research, so you can get the best results possible. I'd also mention at this point that this is a follow-up to a previous video where I discussed what exactly your core is, as well as how to determine whether you've got a weak core. I would absolutely suggest you watch that video before continuing with this one. The way that this video is structured is that I'll be going over the most basic and fundamental movements that target your core, as well as laying the foundations for injury prevention. These exercises include isolation movements as well as stabilizing exercises. Uh, this meaning that we're going to be keeping the spine in a neutral position and avoiding any unnecessary or excessive twisting or bending movements. Uh, what we can do though is progressively overload the muscles by making use of the limbs like the arms and legs and putting them in positions that make these exercises harder and harder and more difficult to perform. Once you can perform all of the exercises in this video comfortably, then you can move on to more dynamic exercises which make use of joint movements such as sit-ups, but I will be going over those in a separate video. So just so you know, apart from the very first exercise, I won't be going over the duration or frequency of which you should be performing these exercises, because at the end of the day, everybody's built differently and will need a different routine. At first glance, these exercises might look a bit easy and you might be tempted just to dive straight into the harder ones. But believe me when I say you'd benefit from mastering these first and you might actually find them harder than you first think. So what you do is you follow the exercises in the order that I lay them out and you keep going until you find one that you struggle with. If you do, you stop at this exercise and then you don't move on to the next one until you feel like you've mastered it. So the final tip before we get started is to always be mindful of your spine and posture while doing these exercises. The whole point is to be engaging your core, so no uncontrolled or erratic movements. If at any point you start developing pain, you need to stop what you're doing. None of these movements should be developing any type of pain other than the normal type of discomfort you might associate with exercise. So to start with, we're going to be trying to activate your existing core muscles. So think of it almost like you're trying to wake them up. Because you might already have a great foundation of core muscle, but if you're not using them properly, then they become weak and they're more prone to injury. So we're trying to develop that mind-muscle connection, which will help them become more responsive, and in turn, they're going to feel stronger. All right, so the first exercise is called the drawing in maneuver. What you're going to do is you're going to lie down with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. Now you're going to slowly breathe in, breathe out, then gently draw the belly button in towards the spine to hollow out your abs. Think of it like trying to get your belly button to touch the floor. When you've done this properly, there are minimal to no other movements taking place, so you shouldn't see any rocking of your pelvis, no flaring of the lower ribs, or any increased pressure you're feeling through your feet. I'd suggest that you hold this exercise for about three seconds before relaxing, and repeat the movement about 10 to 15 times. So when you're performing the drawing in maneuver, this activates the transverse abdominus muscle, which is a muscle that supports the trunk and wraps around it this way. When it activates, you can feel it draw in the waistline. So next we're gonna move on to multifidus activation and training. So the multifidus is a muscle in your lower back. You can get to it by placing your index fingers onto your spine and then moving them about half an inch off to either side into the soft muscle, that's your multifidus. So what we're gonna be trying to do with this exercise is we're gonna be trying to tense it. All right, no different than if you're trying to tense the abs. So imagine if someone was going to throw a ball at you and it was gonna hit you in the stomach, how you'd instinctively tense and contract those muscles at the front. We wanna try and do the same thing at the back, which is a little bit harder. So to perform this exercise, it starts the same as the other. You're gonna be lying on your back, but I would suggest placing your hands over the multifidus so that you can feel it as you go. As you try and tense these muscles, you should be able to feel them tighten up over your index fingers. Now, if you can't do this, then that's fine because this is very common, but it does mean you should stop here and not move on to the next exercises until you can comfortably contract and relax these muscles just as easily as you can contract your abs or even just clenching your fists together. All right, once you've got to grips with these, we can move on to other core exercises that make use of stabilization exercises. These are gonna be broken down into two categories, ones that are gonna be focusing on the anterior muscles at the front here, and ones that are gonna be working on the posterior muscles. So for the exercises that are targeting your anterior core, you're gonna be given different starting positions, which are all progressively increasing in difficulty, and then you have to perform three variations, and these variations are the same every single time. It's gonna be bending the hip to 90 degrees, then straightening that leg out, and then you're gonna be lifting that leg straight to about 45 degrees. So let's see what that looks like. So keeping one leg down, you're gonna perform the three movements. 
you're going to bend your hip to 90 degrees, slide your heel out to extend the knee, and then lift that straight leg up to 45 degrees. All right, so that's the first variation. There are three more and all follow exactly the same pattern. The next position is holding one leg at 90 degrees of hip flexion, but this time you're holding it with your arms. And then you're gonna perform the same three movements as before. You're gonna hip bend to 90 degrees, and you're gonna slide that heel out, and then you're gonna lift that straight leg up to 45 degrees. So the last one, which is the hardest one yet, you're gonna be holding both legs at 90 degrees of hip flexion, but with no arm assistance this time. And the same again, slide the heel out, straightening the knee, and then you're gonna lift that straight leg up to 45 degrees. Now those might seem hard enough, but what I didn't tell you was you need to be able to perform all of those while doing the drawing in maneuver, if you remember that exercise we did earlier on in the video. So if you can't do these, that's fine. Just stop at the exercise you can't do and just keep practicing the ones that you can. And you can make this more challenging by doing more repetitions or holding them for longer periods of time to help develop strength. You do this for a week or two and then you have a go at the next exercise in that sequence and see how it feels. So onto the posterior core exercises now. So these are similar to the ones on the anterior core, but these exercises can be done more of like a linear fashion in a sequence. So you start doing these on all fours and then slowly progress the intensity by lifting one arm overhead. Then bring it back down and extend one leg. Now try to elevate that leg by six to eight inches. Now, while maintaining that position, lift up the arm on the opposite side so you're now balancing on only one hand and leg. And then don't forget to repeat this on both sides. Once you've done this, you can now lie on your front with your arms folded across your forehead. Start by extending one leg. Now extend both legs. And now the final movement is you lift your head, arms and legs all at once. And that's it. So what I would also suggest doing is supplementing with the planking exercise. So with those, you've got the front plank, the reverse plank, and the side plank. Now the side plank is particularly effective at working your quadratus lumborum as well as your external obliques, which so far haven't really been affected too much by the exercises we've done so far. Okay, so if you can do all of those exercises comfortably, then that means you've got decent control of the stabilizing muscles around your core. This is great for day-to-day -day activities and gives you a good foundation to build strength upon. What I would suggest next is then we're ready to start working on dynamic movements, which will be coming up in another video. I hope this has been useful for you, but if you're at all concerned about the health of your back or you're experiencing back pain, then please don't hesitate to contact me. Otherwise, I would say good luck with these and I'll see you in the next video.